Italy has Ferrari. Britain has Aston Martin. And America has the Corvette. In the pantheon of American sports cars, this is their greatest offering. It's been around for 51 years, and in America, they don't even have stuff that old in museums. And what a name, too, Corvette. And besides that iconic name, it actually looks like a sports car as we in Europe know it. Well, it's not the usual American enormous saloon with the engine out of a battleship. This has always been purpose-built as a sports car. And in half a century, the recipe has never changed. Always a swooping body, always rear drive, always fiberglass. This, then, is America's Porsche 911. But here in Europe, we already have a Porsche 911. It's called the Porsche 911. So we've never been too interested in the vet. But that's not going to put off the Americans from trying to sell them to us. And whilst a basic 911 will set you back £60,000, this costs a more modest £40,000. For that, you get a 6-litre V8 with 400 horsepower, and more importantly, 400 foot-pounds of torque. Now, that's enough to pull up all of those trees over there and put them over there. Now, for the price, that may seem like a bargain. But sadly, there's also quite a lot of this car that's bargain basement. These plastics, where are they getting them from? It's the same with every American car we drive. Well, these are the people who can land on Mars. And there's more misery to come when you're driving it. The clutch is making my left leg hurt, and the gear change has been taken straight out of the Victorian signal box. <laughs> I'm changing gear. <laughs> And then there's the chassis technology. The Corvette's rear suspension uses leaf springs. Let me make that live for you. If you went to your doctor's and he got a jar of leeches out, you know what I mean. And I haven't finished yet. There's still the ride. Let me show you exactly what that means. Here we go. Oh dear, is this the pinnacle of American sports car icons? A plastic wedge with a horrible interior, clunky transmission and suspension technology lifted from the Old Testament? Well, let's hope the Corvette can redeem itself with good old-fashioned grunt. Now, this has always been the party piece of the American sports car. So can this one follow in the tradition of its government and get up other countries' noses? What we've got here is a United Nations drag race, with Britain being represented by a 350 brake horsepower TVR 350, Japan by the Honda NSX, and from Germany, a 911. with roughly the same power, all purpose built for the job. OK, bit of spin off the line. The Porsche's gone backwards. The TBR is absolutely steaming ahead. Neck and neck with the NSX, the Japanese. Oh, this looks poor. A lowly third for the Corvette. The Brits! Oh, dear, they win. So, is this American any good at anything? Well, actually, yes. The head of display, that's cool. That's a very good thing. It shows your revs and speed and all sorts, which is useful. And here's something else interesting. A G-meter. Now, why would an American car need a G-meter? Well, here's a clue. The new Corvette is five inches shorter than the old one, and the wheels are closer to the ends of the car. And there's only one reason they did that. To make it better at going round corners. It feels small, it feels nimble, it's steerable, it turns in quickly. This is a mate, look, this is a corner. We go round a bend. They don't have these in America. How did they know to do this? It may only have leaf springs underneath, but so did Charlton Heston's chariot. And look at the fun he had. And 
when you really hammer it, it starts to sound like a proper muscle car. You know, this seems to happen every time we test a car from the colonies. It was the same when Jeremy drove that Australian Holden. They're a bit crude, but really, really big fun. This one is like an American footballer. It might look simple, it might belch in sports bars, but underneath, there's quite an athlete. Can I just show you something? Do you mind no. if I just show you something? Look at this. Yes. Oh, look, no. look at that. No. Hang look on, at if it. you're a pedestrian and this backs into you, you'd be very pleased for that. It's comfy. And can I just bring something else up from the film? Yes. Leaf springs. Ah, yes. Well, basic but functional. Leaf springs, yeah, like you get on a silver cross pram. Yes. Or a medieval ox car. This is true, <laughs> but they work. You're not seriously suggesting that this car could go round the track as fast as, say, a a Russian TVR. Well, let's find out. It's time for some shock and awe with George W. Stick. <laughs> and away he goes. Loads of wheel spin off the line. Don't forget, that's 400 snarling Wild West horses fighting back. Question is, will they make life difficult through the corners? There's oversteer in there. A lot of oversteer, which is a bit of a worry. Look at that. Oh, locking the front wheels into Chicago there. Got to admit, it does get a bit frisky when you're braking very hard, the Corvette. Coming round to the hammerhead now. Lots of cars understeer here, <laughs> but not this one. You can actually hear the Stig feathering the accelerator around there, trying to keep that back end in line. He's heading up towards the follow-through now. Now, the Corvette should be very fast here. The Stig can really open up that big V8. Is properly quick. Over the first half of the lap, the Chevy was looking set for a solid time. Could have been in the high 120s. Will he hold on to that? A bit messy there. Coming towards Gambon. More oversteer through there and across the line in. In what? One. Which Down is good. here, yes. yes. Obviously, I'm 20. Ooh. 6.8. Now that is a fast car. I'm sorry, you can't deny it, Clarkson. Look at that. That's not bad. It's faster than. I mean, it's nearly as fast as an Evo. It's a quick car. I'll grant you that's a very quick, a very messy lap, but a very quick time. So there we are. If you want a, a plastic left-hand drive car with Vietnamese suspension, here it is. That's very fast. <laughs> Whatever.